tonight on 16 by 9. Bitcoins are transferred directly from person to person via the net without going through a bank or clearinghouse. The Bitcoin revolution. This is going to change the world. A brand new currency with no government control. No president, no king in this world can stop a Bitcoin transaction. And then, not criminally responsible. It's like being caught in a tide or in the ocean, you know. You're, you're in something that's bigger and stronger than you are. Controversy in the justice system. A killer is a killer is a killer, mentally ill or not. And families caught in the middle. Then, taking a free ride. From my earliest memories, I can remember I've always been fascinated with freight trains. I have a feeling that before this train leaves, someone's going to come and kick me out. Here's Carolyn Jarvis. Good evening and welcome to 16 by 9. As the dollar and the euro continue their slow path to recovery, some people are trading in their money for a currency that is already booming. It's called Bitcoin, and it's the currency of the Internet. Invented five years ago by an anonymous programmer, Bitcoin has no government tied to it, no delay when sending money, and few, if any, transaction fees. And while many people still may not consider Bitcoin real money, it's making some people really rich. It has been the scene of many uprisings. Berlin, a city both elegant and defiant. At its heart lies a neighborhood called Kreuzberg, the most radical of all. It's a kind of revolutionary area. People here are looking for alternatives to existing systems. It is here, from behind his bar, that Jörg Platzer leads a modern-day rebellion against the current financial system and the governments that control it. It's a digital money that can be transferred at almost no cost in split seconds around the globe from human to human. What he's talking about is Bitcoin, an online currency that is taking off. That is 0.0353 Bitcoin, please. Bitcoin is different than anything you're used to. The dollar, the yen, the euro, currencies are traditionally connected to governments and to banks. But not Bitcoin. That's what makes it so appealing to the radical in York. No president, no king in this world can stop a Bitcoin transaction. Governments accustomed to paper money protected by bank rules are struggling, trying to figure out what to do about this new virtual currency built for the internet age. Some countries have made it illegal, others are trying to regulate it. And just this month, the United States held Senate hearings into Bitcoin. Bitcoin should not be regulated, Bitcoin cannot be regulated, and governments should just take the fingers off Bitcoin. Aaron Koenig is a libertarian who's very public about his view of governments and their banks. We need a different monetary system, and Bitcoin can be it. He blames them for the world's financial woes. The current monetary system is a big fraud. It's a big Ponzi scheme. All this financial crisis we've been through, it, it's all very much linked to the monetary system that we have, which is a very bad and, and evil system. And while he doesn't believe in banks, he does believe in Bitcoin. I'm happy not to have my money in the bank because I don't trust banks. I'd rather have my money in gold, silver, real estate, Bitcoin, because that's safe. Germany is the only country that's given Bitcoin the official stamp of approval, deeming it private money. So here, at about two dozen shops that accept it, you can use Bitcoin just like you'd use a euro. Jörg's bar was the first to accept Bitcoin and has become a gathering place for believers. We are from Holland. We made a decision to make a road trip to Berlin. I want to spend some bitcoins uh, because they are uh, one of the places to be at the moment. Jorg is absolutely certain bitcoin will eventually be used everywhere. 
I'm as confident about that as I was 25 years ago about email when everybody told me, Jörg, who is ever going to send these funny computer to computer messages? That's got no future. Bitcoin has been around since 2008 when this email was sent out to a group of techies. It talked about a new electronic cash system and it was authored by Satoshi Nakamoto, a person or group of people who remain a mystery. The premise of Bitcoin can be tricky to explain. Bitcoin is a cryptocurrency, virtual money, that exists in cyberspace. What is Bitcoin? Bitcoin is the first decentralized digital currency. While governments make new money by printing more at the mint, Bitcoins are mined, not unlike gold. Except here, a supercomputer, or even a computer whiz, mines new Bitcoins by cracking a complex code unique to each Bitcoin. With Bitcoin, miners use special software to solve math problems and are issued a certain number of Bitcoins in exchange. When a code is cracked, the person who owns the computer now has a new Bitcoin. And like a lump of gold, they can sell it or use it to buy things. Bitcoins are transferred directly from person to person via the net without going through a bank or clearinghouse. And again, like gold, the number of Bitcoin is finite, capped at 21 million. We wanted to try out Bitcoin, so equipped with a digital wallet that we downloaded onto a smartphone, we gave it a shot. The process is relatively simple. That's my wallet with my code. Our phone scans a code, and Bitcoins instantly go from our digital wallet to the stores. And you've received 0.01572 Bitcoin. Bitcoin to me, yes. Unlike a debit card, the transaction doesn't go through a bank. And unlike a credit card, there were almost no fees. You can really compare to the internet in the early 90s. Not that many people used it. And when you try to explain it to somebody, well, everybody would say, who needs that? It's just for computer freaks. I heard it all before. Hello? Aaron Koenig is so convinced Bitcoin is the way of the future that he's running a Bitcoin exchange. This may not look like a typical trading floor, but it works the same way. People meet to buy and sell Bitcoin. 100 euros would be 0.79. But Bitcoin has another, very different kind of believer than anti-government libertarians. At the epicenter of capitalism in downtown Manhattan, we caught up with the speculators. The problem being a Bitcoin company right now is they want to invest too much money. Jaron Lukasiewicz, Charlie Shrem, and David Johnston. Think of them as the new generation of dot-com millionaires. Every major venture capital firm in the country is looking to invest in our company, and they're very serious about many companies in the space. All three created Bitcoin startups and reaped the rewards of investing early. When you first bought Bitcoin, how much was it worth? 35. I think 17. $14.56. And how much is it worth today? Gox, I saw this morning at 200 and it's it's down down at 190. 190. That's incredible. Yeah. It's just the beginning. Since we recorded that interview in October, Bitcoin has multiplied more than fivefold in price, cracking the $1,000 mark for one Bitcoin. So there are still millionaires to be made. Here. Absolutely. There are billionaires to be made. Perhaps the first billionaires to be made will be the Winklevoss twins of Facebook fame, who reportedly own 1% of all Bitcoin. Today, Charlie Schrem co-owns a bar he bought with Bitcoin, pays his rent with Bitcoin, and he, along with Jaron and David, hope their companies will drive Bitcoin into the mainstream something that can be used for someone in their everyday life, the soccer moms, the grandmas, that's when Bitcoin's gonna really be valuable. And that's what we're all trying to do. To people who say this isn't real money, you say what? The dollar isn't real money. <laughs> Speculators are the largest group of Bitcoin owners by far, credited with skyrocketing Bitcoin's value. But some of the same things that attract speculators are drawing in another group. Breaking news tonight, a mysterious online marketplace. The FBI has seized control of the Silk Road. It's like cocaine and heroin. And it's making Bitcoin front page news. Next, 
a cyber currency, and its criminal connection. It often can become a haven for money launderers, terrorists, narco-terrorists, etc. It's been called the Amazon of illegal goods, an underground website with ads for drugs, guns, even hitman for hire. It went by the name Silk Road, and it only dealt in Bitcoin. It's Silk Road. Black tar heroin to crack cocaine. Cyber currency. Illegal business on the web. When the FBI shut it down in October, it made headlines. They called it the most sophisticated criminal marketplace on the internet. A haven for money launderers, terrorists, narco-terrorists, etc. Sophisticated because Bitcoin, a new cyber currency, provides a veil of anonymity to its users. And according to the FBI, in the two and a half years Silk Road was running, more than a billion dollars worth of illegal goods was pumped through the site. Bitcoin is tainted by the company it keeps. Duncan Stewart is a tech trend analyst. The fact that Bitcoin has certain attributes that are unusually well suited to illegal activities means that it tends to attract those elements who wish to do illegal things. While the alleged mastermind of Silk Road denies all charges, police warn he won't be the only one who's caught. Already another illegal bazaar has sprung up in Silk Road's place. It's called Black Market Reloaded. And on it, we found ads for this AK-47, grenades, and cocaine. And again, it only accepts Bitcoin. You think people are going to be prosecuted for using Bitcoin in Canada? I think they will be prosecuted for using Bitcoin either for actual illegal activities, drugs, violence, uh, weapons, or for making a million dollars trading Bitcoin and not reporting that to the tax person. But there is another obstacle for Bitcoin, as big as the FBI and the RCMP, the banks. In both Canada and the US, they are leery of Bitcoin. I've been kicked out of every major bank. I can't have an account at Chase, Citibank, Wells Fargo, because I'm in Bitcoin. Charlie Schrem created a company to make Bitcoin more user-friendly. One bank flew me out and said, the reason we can't work with you is we simply see you as a competitor to us. Like, we, that's why we can't bank you. I know which bank that was. Yeah, like, have a nice day. So what am I supposed to do in that case? In Canada, some Bitcoin startups have received letters like this one, closing down their accounts. When we asked the banks about their position on Bitcoin, no one would explain. But security expert Michael Perklin has a theory. The way that the Bitcoin technology works, you don't need banks. You can be your own bank. It's got to be a scary notion if you're one of the major five banks in Canada. You're taking business away from the bank. It definitely is a, uh, a, a sea change. Could the banks shut down Bitcoin? No. They can make it diff difficult to use and they can make it difficult to go back and forth between traditional currencies and Bitcoin. But there's nothing that a bank can do to shut down Bitcoin. The rub for banks is that in the cyber world you won't need a checking or savings account. People will be able to keep their money in an electronic wallet. So given this new technology, what will the banks look like in 20 years time? Hi, I'm Mike, how's it going? And hi, you're Carolyn, how's it going? People can be their own banks. And if there's a sign that time is near, this could be it. So say we want to do $120, this is gonna get you 0.5438 Bitcoin. The world's first, and so far only, Bitcoin ATM. It went live just last month in Vancouver and did $100,000 worth of transactions in the first week alone. The company's co-founder, Mitchell Demeter. We're going to be spreading those out across Canada, probably hitting the major cities, Calgary, Toronto, Montreal, and Ottawa. Currency expert Arvind Jan doesn't buy it. He says Bitcoin is unreliable and too much of a mystery. It's being issued by an algorithm on computer, uh, but who's deciding that? Who decides how many dollars are issued? Who has control over that? And that part gives me a bit of a fear that it has the potential to become a Ponzi scheme. He says the money we have now works because it's backed by institutions and norms, like regular elections and taxes. The fact that these are currencies issued by a system that is working according to known rules and it is working, it's likely to continue working for the foreseeable future. 
Without government rules or a framework, Bitcoin is only regulated by the free market. Now, if you ask me what's going to be the value of Bitcoin in one year, I would say somewhere between 20 and $2,000. A bubble is not a stable situation. It's in the long run very unhealthy for the economies. And who's to say there won't be another digital currency in a month? What prevents somebody else from coming up and saying my algorithm is even better than the Bitcoin algorithm? If somebody better comes along, there goes the value of Bitcoin. Still, the excitement for Bitcoin hasn't waned. The currency continues to grow. And for the true believers, it is the future. This is going to change the world. I see it as only a, a matter of time before this technology gets adopted everywhere. In my lifetime? Definitely in your lifetime. We'll be right back.